and they tell me we don't have it. I say, here it is on, on the thing, and I have a witness with me. I have my niece as a witness. And so they don't have the property. Okay, so then, now remember now, I've already made 20 copies, I don't know how many copies of, uh, of uh, my property receipt with the file, it says uh, a parcel of papers, box of papers, that's what it says. When I go to the, the next morning, I guess that might be a Monday morning, at the mass at the masjid, I call. Maybe it's not Monday. Maybe it's Friday by then. I call the police department. Internal affairs. And uh, what I gave my name and everything, they said, "Oh yeah, you signed. You filled out something two years ago, uh, three years ago when they did the same thing." Uh, and uh, we'll give you the results of that. So it was, they found that certain things had happened, but the police acted in accord with da, 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 state policy. I said, that means if you, if you shoot me, if it's in accord with the policy, you can shoot me because you shot me in accord with the policy. Yeah, we could do that if you do this, that, and that. Right? That's what they say on TV. Oh, he did such and such. And it's the policy, not the Constitution. So I'm arguing with him. I said, so what about the Constitution? Well, our policy, and I'm just having fun with him. Our policy, I said, which comes first, the Constitution or your policy? They're in order. I said, that what you just told me is in order with your policy, but not with the Constitution. Well, I said, which comes first, the Constitution or your policy? We follow our policy. I said, that's right, you follow the policy, but you swore to uphold the Constitution, not the policy, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So all the federal workers on it, you uphold, I swear, uphold the Constitution of the state of California, and the Constitution, if you're a soldier, the Constitution, that, right? Not the military policy. I didn't swear, okay, I didn't swear to uphold the military policy, right? Mm -hmm. I swore to uphold the Constitution, support the Constitution. Now, we're going to speed up. Time really flies. After I call, I'm talking to the Oakland police. No less than an hour later, the police roll in for the second time. This time, they're at the front door, all around the back, and so when they usually come like that, I just take the, uh, the deed to them, and I went to the back window, I said, hey man, take it easy. Because they're agitated, they're not, uh, they're not uh, you know what I mean, they, they real, uh, they're on a mission this time. They're always on a mission, but this time, they're, they're rough. You know what I mean? They're not, well, they're always rough, but you know, they're on another level. So I opened the window, I said, hey man, take it easy, y'all take it easy. What is this about? Da -da -da -da. Come out of there, open the door. I said, hey, look, I already had the thing in my hand. I said, look, here. When I handed it to him through the window, this is a kind of low window, he grabs my hand and try to pull me to the window. I pulled back and I had my sweater, you know, that sweatshirt on. Mm -hmm. So I just came out of that. But he jumps through the window, another one jumps through the window. And they was, by the time I looked around, it was about five or six police storming around the masjid, looking all around like they're looking for something. Okay, this is not a trespassing. You don't treat a trespassing case like that. This is not trespass. What, what is the problem? 
trespassing. This one is a trespassing. See, you come with 12 police, uh, all these cars, the trespassing? Don't seem like that to me, homeboy. Now, they take me off to jail again. This is the second time. Now, in the meantime, I have all of the papers and my property is, is sitting right next to me and I'm at a table just like this in the masjid. And I got, uh, remember I told you I copied my, uh, I copied my uh, receipt from the government, from the, from my arrest receipt. Yeah. Your property receipt. Property receipt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I had the original property receipt. I don't know if you ever saw me with my little uh, smudge bag I wear around my, it, it, it keeps my wallet and when I'm traveling. Of course, it needs a little washing after 10 years. It's, it's, they have it as black, actually, it's gray, but I guess it got a little dirty, but it holds the stuff. In that side pocket, I had my original receipt for the other arrest for my property that they won't give back. When they took me to jail out there, they didn't, they took that I had it in my property, but they took it. They took that and they took the receipt. Okay, all the other property, the other receipt, far as I know, that's all gone. But, of course, I had stashed five copies of that because I made 20 copies, so I left them there and they think that's all of them. And I got them receipts. That's what it was all about. This is an arranged event. This is a design. This is a preemptive strike. This is making them strike me. And all out of proportion to anything. What's the first arrest? You're somebody is in this building illegally. And they don't come and say, hey, uh, do you have a... Do you have any right to be here? Do you here? have a right to be here? You know, how long have you been here? I can say you know, I've been here for 30 something years, you know, since 1980. Well, 81. I've been here since 81, other than that, I mean, you know. So everything was perfect. Now I want to in 15 minutes give you a, a overview of a, what this a grateful experience. We already, we've run over 100 times our mission. The first super experience of gratefulness is when I go into jail, uh, I meet some people that know me, know about me. I know, I meet some that know exactly uh, about it. I meet, uh, it's several times where we run across people that actually, the same group that was going to go up and uh, kick them guys out of the place, one of them was in jail uh, with me because he said, yeah, I was a with your son and you told him, because my son said, man, I, we got an extraction team. We're going up there and get them niggas out of there. I said, absolutely not. Leave them alone. We don't do none of that. Okay, here's what happened. When I was in jail, you're going through the regular booking process and you're having close contact with people who are really distressed calling on the phone, I need to get out. After about 12 hours, one of the young guys looked at me and he said, why are you so calm and relaxed, you know? I said, no, I do this, this is a, I said, I'll be out today, be out tomorrow. I'll be out in a month. Let's say I'm out in a year, I'll still be out. I mean, uh, there's nothing they can do. This is a 
The other thing that I was running across was, uh, I forget about how many agents they're going to send to be in the cell with me and all that. That's okay. I'm just going to relate the story one way for now. And I'm going to go on and cut short a lot of the storytelling. The most overwhelming thing that hit me was by the time I'm uh, going back the second time, I'm in the cell with brothers who are protégés of some of my friends, you know, like big Negroes. And now remember, when I go over into the jail section, although I'm in, uh, and when I go to court, I'm going to Muni court, that's small stuff, you know, and people that have hearings and bails, but also you go on people with parole violations, you go on people with, uh, who uh, could get out, you go on to people who could be remanded. Now some of the stories that I'm, some of the realities when people are talking on the phone, you know, they call, they tell, giving the whole story. And when you're sitting there with the people after 12, 18 hours, two days, you're learning their whole life story. What is my response? Why so much gratefulness? When I made this transition from Jahiliya to Islam, I'm realizing over and over again when I'm talking with people that I know and that, that, that I know very, that I know their teachers very well. People are mid rent level drug dealers and some are big and came, you know, up and down. And they know the whole story. And I'm, I'm motiv giving motivating talks all the time on there. Design your own future picture. And they're looking at me like I'm, it makes them feel good but they're feeling bad. What do I realize? If I wouldn't have accepted Islam, I would have been in the same condition that they're in. They're all in this jail, either serving a sentence of quite a while. Some of them are waiting to go to the feds, some are waiting to go to the state, and in talking to about some of my friends, some that are the same age as I am have accumulated as many as 40 years in prison. You know, because you go out, come back, go out, come back. Some has accumulated 30 years. 20 years is just automatic. That the people have spent 20 years. 30 years, 40 years of their adult life in prison. They've missed the whole show. And they don't have no hope of getting out anyway soon, and they're my age and older. But some who are in their 60s are going to prison now for I don't know how long. And they'll be in a wheelchair. Some of the people in prison that use drugs so much, I was helping one guy, he was in a wheelchair because they put me in the old man tank. That means people who were 40, 50 and over, or had, you know what I mean, uh, health issues. So I'm help pushing one friend around in a wheelchair because we get booked together and we're going through the. And Gratefulness, first of all, my response to all of this, to the police, to Mukhtar and them, when I looked at Mukhtar when, they, when we were at the masjid, both times his face was contorted with hatred, jealousy, all kind of, because remember, if they didn't did all that stuff to me, to the community, and it hasn't had no effect, that means that I work for a system that burns people alive, that washes them out on the first go-round. All of them, mafioso, it don't make no difference. The feds, 
They're arrogant about it. I wash him out the first go round. Here's a Negro that survived all of that, and what's my attitude now? It's almost Jesus like. I'm telling you, this is the biggest spiritual experience I ever had. This one. Forgiveness, I was telling to fail. I said, I'll never talk bad to a police or to another person. Because I don't feel it. In other words, now, we've been talking about this, and it's been happening over a long period of time. But until you get in the fight, you don't know how well you trained, right? But after the first round, you see how you acting in accord with your opponent. You say, man, that training, I've been really, uh, you know, I trained properly for this fight to where the fight is easy. What is gratefulness? Gratefulness is just overwhelming gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I accepted Islam. That's, first, that's the first one because it's easy to see. That I'm in a tank with everybody else and they're going away and going to be there for some decades, everything else. And the longest I can be there, the longest, the longest, longest I can be there is a week. I don't have enough to worry about. I called to fail. I said, hey, just so you don't feel like it, ask how you to give a quick call. Hey, we just roll right along. No problem. Didn't nothing fall apart, ain't nothing. So I ain't got nothing to worry about. And I'll get out sooner or later. It was three young brothers from Honduras. When they found out you speak Spanish, they really start liking you. So this was, we're going to court business second time around. So they get their paperwork, they want me, I'm talking to another guy who's uh, from one of the islands and was speaking Spanish, but he's been here all his life, he's an older guy. So his English, English is his first language and Spanish is his second. But he could speak it enough with them to help him out a little bit. When they went into the court and we came out and uh, they, I told them, no, the Wes, the judge is a Mexican lady. That's what the, the, they were saying, she's a Mexican lady. And one of the brothers went in, he got cut loose. And so I was telling them, no, the Wes is a here, they make kind of, you know, nice, sympathetical, you know, sympathetic, all that stuff. So they went in and they came out looking kind of sad. They were pretty amiable talking, like young guys, they're in their early 20s. So they gave me their charge sheet, and I saw all of them were arrested together, they had one point, 14 point, uh, 14 point five grams of uh, crack cocaine, 14.5 grams of heroin, and an unspecified amount of crank, crystal meth. So they wanted me to tell them what the chart, what the, they gave them their sheet and everything. And then it had on there uh, all of what they had, they remanded over. Then they had as a hold for immigration because they're from Honduras. I asked them, uh, no. And then the youngest one said, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Niños? is in La Calle. Hmm. My children in the street. I said, excuse my child. I said, God damn, man. You know, and I'm looking at myself. And I'm looking at everybody else. And the thing that's in my mind is I accepted Islam or my life would have been like that. And I'm looking at these young guys. Whatever happened to them, they're going back to Honduras anyway. 
the guy's children in the street. Right now, he's in jail. He ain't got, got no shot of getting out, no kind of way. Because they got a half ounce of uh, crack cocaine, they got a half ounce of heroin, and then they got an unspecified amount of uh, crystal meth. That's the triangle of fear. Those are the, the worst things you could have. Right? And they got them, it says, for sale. There. Possession for, see Vendi, you know, for sale. Possession for sales. That's even worse. Why was I so grateful? I was grateful, thankful to Allah for Islam. And super thankful that we're challenging the United States government more than anybody during our period. Nobody else lasts this long. Nobody else stands in front of their face and tell them, give them an analysis of what's going to go on like we do. And then it happens over and over again. <clears throat> we can't be wrong. We've got to be right because it happens in front of us. And they can't do it. They foaming at the mouth. The people that's come get me arrested is so contorted that they're going through some mental trauma. Not only the mental trauma, but the jealousy, you know. And I'm just so, I'm telling, uh, what's the name? Love you, brother. Love you. Here, here. I said, love you. And, and guess what? I mean it. I actually mean it. This is why this is a trip. Another trip was I get out of jail at that evening, at early in the morning or something. And the next day, okay, next day, I left Oakland and I'm out in the middle of the painted desert, the badlands of New Mexico, in 24 hours. Beautiful environment. I just passed the Grand Canyon. And I'm saying, this is a trip. This is a trip. Yesterday I was in jail. Yesterday. And today, less than a day later, I'm out in this, looking at this beautiful tourist come from all over the world to see the painted desert and, you know, the uh, pueblos where the people lived in the rocks and all of that. You know, I go past that all the time. And I'm almost ready to cry. I would have cried in jail if I wasn't a grown man. And people would have mistook it. Hey, man. Uh, no, I'm telling you, this mission that we're doing, and I'll wrap it up. We arranged it, and they followed through. And they got snared. And all of that gun-toting and assault and all of that, we got them to do that for the, first of all, the first time they just wrote all that stuff down. When I went to court, I didn't even go to court. They just said there's no case. They just said you don't have to. Okay, so there's no case. Now they do that all the time. The second time I went to court, they said, well, you come on December the 12th and we'll see uh, whether there's reason to, for you to go to court about it. But they had to do that because they did it twice in a few days. So, but what is it? It's a misdemeanor. It's less than a traffic ticket. If, <laughs> if I'm bound over to court for, you know, a preliminary hearing, and I get charged and convicted, the worst they could give me is $30 or $40 fine. It's below a traffic ticket. It's trespassing. I can't lose it. But look at what we enforced them to do. The contortion, the foolishness. This is design fitna on its highest level. What I'm telling everybody here in the public, we knocking this system, slapping it upside the head so ruthlessly that it's almost unfair what we're doing to them. 
Now remember, I didn't call anybody. I called people to inform people. Never bail me out. I had the money. The police said, why don't you bail out? I said, I ain't bailing out. I ain't bailing out. If I had the money, I would bail out. I said, no. That experience was a wonderful experience. Going to jail. Let me see if I can. Of course, while I was in jail, I could say on stage, I just wrote notes all the time and thought and planned and wrote my experiences, like the letters from the Birmingham jail. That's what all, all of my notes are like that. That's all it is. It was the, might as well be the, uh, the letters and notes from the Santa California, Rita. Santa Rita jail. Uh, symbol of struggle, sacrifice, ability, tenacity, and possibility. We are showing and we already have shown. Now next, I'm gonna get around the world and I'm gonna talk about this. I'm gonna present it the way it, re the way it happened, which I already have, but what it means. See, to me, you can tell it wasn't no traumatic nothing. But when I tell that to people, I'm gonna tell them like what it means for a citizen to be assaulted on their own property with the ultimate weapon, with assault rifles, what a what weapon? Why is this? Well, it's trespassing. Oh, give me on record one person that you had 15 cars and a SWAT team for a guy that stepped on McDonald's property or he's sleeping in the doorway or what, right? Look how silly they are. Look how easy they are to set up. And they think they're in control of everything. They're not in control. Them dummies are out of control. Mr. and Mr. America, we trying to help y'all, but y'all are slow. Y'all is dumb to do that. For the charges to act like that in the whole street seat, and it's all over the world now because, uh, okay. We do need unorthodox uh, things now because the world is in a bad situation. And going to jail helped me, the main thing it helped me see too is, it's not about you, homeboy. God done already hooked you up. You hooked up, man. You hooked up. I mean, like, per I'm hooked up. I mean, if I'm in jail by the worst dictatorship in world history, and I'm in there for trespassing, <laughs> and they're trying to make me mad and evil, like they did one of our other brothers. They think we're all the same that if you keep harassing them, they get mean. I told them a long time, the exact opposite thing. You hear me now, I've sworn off talking bad to police and everybody. I mean, I'm just telling y'all because y'all know and make, but I felt like crying. I felt like a doggone a Jesus freak or somebody. <laughs> no. I mean, while they doing this, I said, what is going on with you, brother? You got to, what is this? I said, well, that's what the Quran say. That's what it is. So Allah help you, right? I turned the stuff over. Remember before, remember we talked about tafwi, mm -hmm. delegation, right. and we talked about ridha. Okay. How this is working. I'm going to just be a little five, ten minutes over after that. It'll be all right. Remember when I'm reading you the highest level of this stuff, from almost from Sufi type stuff, semi-Sufi. Well, you're fine. That's Shia Sufi, is it? It's saying that you, tafweed means to delegate your affairs to Allah, totally. And you don't depend on your plans and all of your stuff. You depend on Allah. And whatever comes to you, this rhythm means you're grateful and appreciative and you're thankful. 
for it. That's what rhythm is. Okay. When I first started going through that a few years ago, I still automatically you have to make plans. You get go to heaven or hell by you know your own planning, thinking, working, and carrying out. So it don't mean that you don't do no thinking, no planning. You use whatever Allah has given you. Then you turn that over to Allah. That's the way I did on this. And like I say, I didn't know how well I was doing till I got into a fight, like training for a fight. You know, you know how a guy hit the bag, boy, he looked good, right? But you can't hit no another man like you hit the bag, because he ain't gonna stand there and let you just punch him in the sausages, right? You don't know how well your training and planning has went until you get in the ring with your opponent. You train for a lefty, okay, let's see how well you done. First round gonna give you an idea. You gonna know deep down in Right? How well things went, you know. And if it's just something, by the sixth or seventh round, you're going to know for sure. Because somebody's going to be getting tired by then. And if it's you, you know you haven't trained properly. For mm -hmm. this, this rhythm, turning everything over to a lot, I did more of that than I ever did before. I mean, what I'm saying is we're human, so you, you, you're you not a perfect turning over after you. You're not, not 100%, not, you know, that would be a perfect human being. But the level is so high and so sufficient that look what was the result. The result of me going to California was like the first round. I see, oh yeah, I'm well trained for this. I'll talk about what we're gonna do uh, later, but the, the hatred, the hasad, the demonization of peoples and the public lifestyle, man. People, it really, you can see how bad people's lives are. And it really gives you a first-hand view of why you're doing what you're doing. Because when you're in jail, you're seeing it on the first and if you're in almost a hospital tank, you see it. And, and the sadness that the people have with them. You know what I mean? This is, you're facing five years. That's a long time. If you gotta do two years in jail, that's a long time. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting there with the longest, the longest, longest with everything going wrong, wrong, wrong. I can't be there no more than three days. And if the whole roof fall in, I could be there a whole week. Can you imagine that? I was almost ashamed to tell people what was happening because uh, when a, a guy is getting ready to get out, the others feel a little bad, you know, about it because he's getting out, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'll talk about Sabakun Liberation Movement, leadership for the 21st century and all of that later. I just wanted to let everybody know, what is this, the 26th? And we just got back from California uh, two days ago. This was the best trip I've ever had in my life and the most wonderful jail experience that I have ever had. And the, the theme now is uh, spiritual jihad, because that's what the message is clear. We've always talked about it. it's not a physical, we're not a psychological guerrilla warfare. Well, it's not psychological guerrilla warfare anymore, although we use some of it because this is spiritual jihad. We're fighting a mean guy that demonizes us. But this is a jihad al -Akbar. This is a spiritual jihad. And guess what? It's so clear that they have no defense against a spiritual jihad. They have no defense against it. They can't do anything about it. 
And the stuff that they try to do to make you mean, make you feel sorry for them more. So they have all those resources. The lives that they're wasting. In jail, you just see the wasted time, wasted energy. It's the system's fault that they haven't provided for the welfare, you know, by common defense, the welfare. They have not provided anything for the masses of people but jail. It's the first thing you realize how efficient they are with moving people from here to that, 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 that. It's like clockwork. But if you go to ask the government for something you got coming, you gotta call Mr. So and so, you gotta call back at 335, and you know, and the government just closed down already. You know what I mean? When you got to tell the truth, when you got something coming from the government, you're lucky if you get it right away. But if they're taking some from you, they're efficient and deadly. That was the beauty of this trip. And uh, I'll save some of the rest uh, for later. But we're on post, we're on focus, and we're working toward healing the society. We don't want to make, uh, I'm done with any kind of uh, feelings of uh, inconsistencies or uh, dislikes. This, this is just different. It's beautiful. Hey man, thanks be to Allah. I hope everybody get a chance to feel at least at one corner of that type of bliss where you in the struggle but you and I call it functional bliss, where you're functioning. You know, when they think of uh, bliss, you, f you think of a guy cross-legged, a yogi, something like floating on a cloud. No, no. This is functional bliss. You're in a state of gratefulness, thankfulness, and appreciative, and it's a bliss, I call it functional bliss. Bliss that makes you work better, work harder, and work longer. I thank everyone. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Are there any questions or comments before you go?